Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tan Butterflies. Today, we are doing the Jeff Flower Imagination Challenge for October. And we are moving into Christmas. I'm not ready for this, y'all. But let's do it anyway. So, our hosts are Kathy Jo DIY and uh, Rustic and Lace DIY. Our guest host is Joanna's DIY Life. So let's get into DIY number one. So we have three challenge items that we must use. Um, so this particular one, I am using the mop head. Um, you don't have to use the entire mop head, but you do have to use some of it in a project. So that's what I'm doing with this. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know that for the collab, I will leave the playlist link in the description box and each of our host links in the description box below. So when you get done watching my video, hop on over and or click on the playlist and just run through the playlist. Show everybody some love. Let them know that you came over from my channel and just enjoy the crafty Cre um, or the creative process of making use of these challenging items. So with this one, I'm starting out with um, some air dry clay. I have kind of started a new series of um, I guess it well, it would be perfect size for tiered trays. So I've kind of started a new um, series of projects. Um, I got inspired by another creator just talking. She was saying something about this year the mushrooms <clears throat> are the new gnomes. I was like, hmm, mushrooms, gnomes, can I combine the two? So here we go. Um, I have made a Halloween one and a fall one. And now I am working on my Christmas one. So that's what um, what I'm working on here. I actually have fun making these. They're they're kind of cute and and the the first two, the fall and the Halloween ones, you can definitely you know tell they're mushrooms. Um, this little Christmas one. Not as much, but it's still cute. I still think it's adorable. So um, I just took and shaped, as you could see, you know, as you saw me do, I shaped the hat um, and the, I was trying to do it where it was like the, the mushroom thing and pointed up and, and over and it just wasn't cooperating. So I had to make the mushroom cap and then put this little hat on top of it. And then I took and did um, a little rim around it for the fuzzy, you know, part. And for that, once I got it on there, I just took my little Cricut tool or my, well, it's a silhouette tool, the little pokey. And went through and just kind of picked at it to, to make it, to give it texture. And then, um, I took my knuckle and kind of ran up in the bottom to, um, make a concave section for the mushroom stem to go in. And you can see I've got my little, uh, sleepy helper there, at least today. <laughs> At least today, he's not reaching over and bopping my gnome on the head. Uh, the the fall one, I think it was the fall one I did. I had set, you know, the top part of it up toward the, the thing there where I put that one. And he kept reaching up there and bopping it. I'm like, stop, you're going to smush it. Um, but yeah, today he's, he's a little more sleepy and snuggly than he is ornery today. So... He, 
he makes an appearance several different times during the video. <clears throat> laying exactly where, you know. And you can see from my pants, he keeps... Uh, there. There's no... I have pets. I can't keep the hair off my clothes. It's ridiculous. Um, I just carry them wherever I go. But anyway, there's other times in the video where he is a little bit mischiev mischievous. Um, he's just behaving right now. So I took and painted, um, used the ivory chalk paint to paint the stem and around the brim of the hat. And then for the mushroom cap, which is going to be the face, I took um, the antique white from Apple Barrel and put just a dab. I'm talking tiny paintbrush dipped in the red and put you know, down in that paint just to give it just a little hint of more of a fleshy tone. Um, and that's what I used to paint the cap with the, um, you know, that's supposed to be his face. So here I am, and I took a few strands uh, out of the mop. I, they're really easy to pull out of there. Um, honestly, I would really hate to try to mop with this mop because those cotton strands were really easy to pull out of there. I'd end up having a mess if I tried to mop with those mop heads. But, thankfully, um, I'm crafting with them instead. And what I'm doing is I took and... Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> My cat was hearing something, and I was waiting to see if he was going to pounce in an area that was going to break something. Um, but anyway, I took and put a bead of hot glue up underneath the edge of the mushroom cap and tucked those cotton mop strands up um, underneath the head there. Now, as you can see, I'm I'm just taking an looping it and doing that and then I went through and cut the loops um I figured that was probably a little bit easier than trying to get individual strands up in there so once I got it glued up there um I took and separated all of them there's like three three cotton strands wound together that make up the, the one strand. So I went through, well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Once I got all of these on there, I flipped it upside down and put a, ran a bead of hot glue underneath as well, um, to hold it so that it, um, just had a little bit more secure hold. And you can see here that I had taken in and separated all of them. I didn't want to make you watch me separate everything. I took another piece of clay and made his little nose, glued it on, and then um, I put two more of the single threads over his nose and, you know, wrapped it around the side there. And at this, at this point, after I got that done, I was like, I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm done. And then I got looking at him later and I'm like, no, nah, he doesn't look right. He needs some Santa hair coming down from the hat too. So I went back and added more to frame out the, the little face a little bit and then come down um, the sides and some around the back. So hence, that's the reason why he doesn't quite look like a mushroom because, well, Santa's got a lot more beard and whatnot. So, you know, you can't really see the mushroom and part of it unless you turn him, or turn him around and look at the back. And you can see here where I've got, you know, where I had added on the sides and whatnot and fluffed it out. So I've got a um, little 
wood cut out snowflake. Um, it is missing one of the little things at the bottom, but because I was gluing it on a skewer, I wasn't as worried about that. I painted it white and then I took some Mod Podge and some ultra flunk, ultra fine white glitter. I can't talk today, y'all. Um, <laughs> if you give me any kind of tongue twister today, we're going to be in trouble because it's just not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, I took that, um, sprinkled it with the glitter and then I covered, um, sealed it with Mod Podge so that I didn't have glitter going everywhere. And while that was drying, I took a skewer um, I think it's a piece of a skewer. Or wait, no, I didn't do that yet. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> don't my Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm taking and painting the base with white. And then, um, I'm going to take and put, I've got a little, one of those little wooden snowmen from, um, Dollar Tree. I'm painting it white and then I'll paint the the cap black. And now that I'm looking at it, I might go in and try to add a little face to it and add some baker's twine for a scarf around its neck. That part's not going to be done in time for the final reveal because, uh, yeah. I'm doing the voiceover. I've already got my video put together, but yeah, I may do that. Anyway, so I took and, um, while the base was drying, I took a, the skewer and just used a little bit of, um, antique wax on it. And then, um, let's see, what did I do? I don't know what I did next. I think this is where I paint it. Okay, this is where I paint the snowman's head while I'm waiting for the skewer, or hat, while I'm waiting for the skewer to dry. I was all over the place with this, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, move your head. Move your fat head. You're going to it, stick it in my paint. <laughs> He's such a little stinker. I can see it now one of these days. He's going to lean up against there and shove that because I've got, um, that's my laptop underneath there. I've got like a little, um, table, uh, a lap table for a laptop. My laptop's on there and I just take and put one of those Dollar Tree cutting mats on top of it so I don't get anything on my laptop. Well, those Dollar Tree cutting mats are kind of slick. I can see it now. One of these days, he's going to do that. Lean up against it and shove everything off at me. Uh, the joys of crafting with, with uh, fur babies. I, I think many of us in this collaboration have our fur babies. Um, I know Brenda has Oliver. And Kathy Jo has her two uh, boxers. Um, and Aria... Uh, she has she has a uh, at least one cat, if not two, that makes appearances in her videos occasionally. But when I first started watching Aria, I was always stressing because her cat would get up on the table there and flick its tail, and she'd have glue or paint that she's working with. I'm like, oh, the cat's gonna get it on its tail. Um, <laughs> but it never does. It it, it it hasn't that I've actually witnessed. <laughs> So I took and another piece of little clay, made a little ball, and then kind of flattened it out on the bottom to make a stand for my um, my little snowflake there. And I'm going to glue it down. I think part of the reason I was all over the place with this, oh, uh, wait a minute, and with the little snowman, I took and Mod Podged it. Now I'm going to sprinkle some of that ultra fine white glitter to give it kind of a sparkly, you know, make it look like glistening snow. 
But anyway, um, I think the reason I was all over the place with this is because I knew exactly why, why, what I wanted to do with that, the base of it. And, um, but I, I got where I was like, okay, I'm going to go take care. Oh, I made another little, uh, clay ball for the hat and did the same thing with the, the pick. I just, you know, to give it texture, to make it look furry. But anyway, back to the base. I knew what I wanted to do with the base, but I knew, and I kept trying to skip to what I wanted to do with the base. I'm like, no, you need to glue your, your things down before you do this. So, um, that's why I was kind of back and forth all over the place with it. Cause I kept trying to skip to this step where I put Mod Podge on the base and sprinkled, um, that faux snow all over it. So, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was all over the place trying to, you know, I went to skip to that step, but I knew that I had to glue my snowman and my little snowflake down before I put the um, faux snow on there. Because otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't sit on, wouldn't have a secure hold on there. Because um, the, the faux snow would compromise the ability to, to really make sure it's adhered down well. <clears throat> so, I got all my little faux snow in there. Um, and why do I feel, is there something else? No, okay. So, now we're on to DIY number two. You'll see photos of the, the little gnome in the final reveal. So, I took two of these, I think they're 4.5 inch wooden planks that come six in a pack from Dollar Tree. I put Mod Podge on both of them and I had printed off um, a couple of little scenes. I'm not 100% happy with this one. I should have lightened uh, edit, you know, edited and lightened it up a little bit because um, it doesn't really pop like I wanted it to. I had a whole whole different vision for what I was going to do with this. And I had to improvise. Um, I know that I have probably six packages of the popsicle sticks, but could I find a single one of the full packages? No, I found a partial package that had six in there. So I had to figure out how to make do with those. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's, it, it, the crafting this week, other than the gnome, the other ones were like, yeah. <laughs> now th this particular project doesn't use one of the challenge items. I used the other two challenge items in the last project. It's a hot mess. Um, and I didn't even really fully finish out the idea that I had for it. Um, but we'll get into that later. So with this, um, I'm trying to make a couple of little windows that, um, one looks like you're gazing in and the other one look, looks like you're gazing out the window. If that makes any sense, the darker one up there in the corner, um, is Santa sitting by a fire warming his hands you know, up to the, the flames of the fire. So, um, what did I do? I got this all out of order. Y'all, I am so sorry. Editing was a, a nightmare too. I thought I had scooted everything around where it needed to be, but evidently I did not. Um, so I took and I used three Jenga blocks for each at the, the base to make it look like a windowsill. Then I took a skewer and measured and cut it. Um, I had all kinds of issues with that too. <laughs> no, no matter how much I measured and trimmed and measured and trimmed, I, I, it was, it was a nightmare. Um, I, I was just having all kinds of issues. Um, but I had framed those out with popsicle sticks, the, the six popsicle sticks that I were, was able to find. Um, 
And evidently either I skipped the footage. I did have it. I might have accidentally deleted it. I don't know. I I'm not sure where it went. Um, I'm a hot mess. Oh, huh, look, it's out of order. <laughs> I can't. I could not win this week on that. The gnome went beautifully. The other stuff, just challenge after challenge, and evidently the editing as well. Um, and it's probably because I did a couple steps of this one here, a couple steps of that, you know, if I was working with the clay, I started the first project and the second project working with the clay. So they weren't in order on my camera and I thought I had put them on here, um, and moved them around where they needed to be. So anyway, you get to see me do the outside frame after watching me do the inside um, part of the frame. Just, you know, yeah. Crafters are usually, most crafters I know are a hot mess. Um, I'm no, no exception to that, as you can see. So um, I got these all trimmed down and I was having... I was having fun trying to figure out the measuring on that one because I wanted, I didn't want to glue anything down because once I got these cut to the right size, I was going to use those as templates for the other one. So getting that top piece that is going to go between those two cut down to the right size and all of that, um, just really required me gluing the other two down. So as you can see, I'm measuring the other two and marking them so I can glue those down on this one where I can get the other one correct. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Ugh. And it just sand off the little, um, cause some, they, they splinter when you cut them sometimes. I sand those down, sand off the splinters and whatnot. So here I am gluing these down. I used a little bit of hot glue and wood glue. And as you know, if any of you craft with Dollar Tree craft uh, popsicle sticks, you know that sometimes they're bent, they're bowed, they're warped, they're whatever. Um, it is what it is. So that one I had to sit there and hold until it actually laid flat because it was a little bit warped. <clears throat> and normally I will go through the package and pull out the, the better ones to, to use, you know. But I had a total of six, um, which left me no room for error and no room for... Um, looking for a, a better one or whatever. Um, I, I just don't know. I could have run down to Dollar General and grabbed some more popsicle sticks, but my craft stash is ungodly. I mean, it's, I was not adding more when I knew. I know. I, I saw it last weekend, a package of, a full package of popsicle sticks. Cannot remember where I saw it. Hello, getting older. Um, I'm about to be 53 years old. My brain, my brain is, is, you know, definitely, <laughs> it's definitely, uh, having issues <laughs> as I get older. Memory is not there. So anyway, with the, with the one, um, with the Santa Claus where it looks like you're looking in the window from the outside, I painted those white, um, especially since that picture is darker as well. But usually, um, I mean, I was thinking, you know, the outside of the, the window, it would look, you know, it would be painted or whatever. This one, um, I just stained them with um, the antique wax and went with a... Um, 
more of a wood look for the the frames, the window um, frames and whatnot. And then I just took some of those little uh, table scatter balls and put I put some greenery and then put those little balls on there and called it good. That was not the that was not what I was envisioning when I sat down to make these. Um, but as I said, crafting was not being friendly to me at that point. I was like, okay, they're, they're looking fine the way they are. I'm not messing with them anymore. All right. So our other two challenge items, a pill bottle and toilet paper, not the toilet paper roll, toilet paper. And for the life of me, I could not think of what to do. Um, now, I have seen Holly from Hot Humble Pie use bottles like this um, with various other, you know, various different I items to make like a milk can. And I thought, oh, well, it shouldn't be too hard to, to take this pill bottle, use some of the air dry clay. And, you know, flare up the top like a milk can. Boy, was I wrong. Just saying. Um, the idea of this is super cute. The implementation of it, not so much. Uh, I just, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have used a piece of paper or something and gone around the thing and then cut it um, and use that as a template to cut the clay. I don't know. <laughs> it's a hot mess, y'all. I didn't even finish it out, okay? I, I have some really pretty rub-on transfers and whatnot that I had planned on putting on, on it you know, and whatnot. I'm not wasting them on this. It is a hot mess. It is what it is. I did not have time to try to rethink it or come up with a different idea or, um, and, and to be honest, the, you know, the craft flow was not flowing, <laughs> so to speak, the way it usually does. Um, which is a clear indication to walk away and leave it be for a while. Um, especially not try to fix or remake a project that's, that's messed up when it's, it's just not working. So it is what it is. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at it from a distance and it's not like, it's not like God awful, awful, but, um, it, it's definitely not my usual standard of what I like when I have a finished project. <laughs> like I said, I didn't even finish with the rest of the idea that I had for it once I got, you know, it, it yeah. Anyway. So if you try to recreate this, I don't know why you would. Uh, well, I mean, the, the concept of the milk jug, it, it's a cute concept, I'm sure it could be executed in a way that, that turns out the way it should. Um, it, I, it just wasn't happening for me for this one. But anyway, if you do try to recreate this, I would suggest maybe taking, um, a piece of thin cardboard or cardstock and trying to do a template to get that, that flared thing at the top where it looks the way it's supposed to. I mean, I was going to take and, and use a um, little bit of black paint here and there and make it look like the chipped enamel and, and the whole nine. I mean, I, I knew what I wanted it to look like. Um, it just didn't work. <laughs> And you're probably, oh, pardon me. And you're probably wondering, where does the toilet paper come in with this? And you'll see here in a, in a few. 
Um, for the life of me, I could not think of anything to do with the toilet paper um, that hasn't already, I, I mean, I've done like the, you know, the, the Christmas um, where you put like a saying on the toilet paper, put it in a little cellophane bag, you know, a little smart alecky Christmas saying. Um, <clears throat> and I've got a couple of photos of those um, at the end of, of here to show that there are other things that you can do with the toilet paper. Um, now, if you didn't know this, you can use um, heat transfer vinyl on toilet paper. And you can also, um, I have taken, when I first got my sublimation printer, I had ordered some laminate sheets. And if you take um, the section of that toilet paper roll and put a laminate sheet on it, you can sublimate something on it as well to make those little gag gift things. So there's a couple of doable toilet paper ideas um, that will, you know, that definitely come out and work. Now, my idea here, as you saw, I crunched up the toilet paper because I wanted it wrinkly. I wanted to use the toilet paper to add some texture to this um, milk jug or milk can. And um, even that, I, I mean, that part of it wasn't so bad either because I wanted it to look like an old um, milk can that had been scuffed up and, you know, whatever. And had I finished out trying to, to do this, I would have dry brushed um, some gray and, and whatnot and really brought out those details where it looked like it was scuffed up. And I would have done like some little marks of enamel and all that, but I didn't. I, I had, I, I quit at that point. <laughs> I was like, nope, it's a hot mess. Um, and for the handles I used, uh, I cut up a piece of the Dollar Tree cutting mat to use for the handles. Um, it's a completely doable project. I mean, definitely. But anyway, thanks for watching.